This Alpine spare tire rear view camera and light system is for those of you that have a 2007 to 2018 JK that either has a factory navigation system and backup camera, or maybe you have one of the upgraded Alpine aftermarket systems in the dash and you're looking for a camera that's going to go along with that, this is going to be an incredibly high quality, well thought out, very well engineered piece that has the price tag to go along with it. This is going to be a pretty easy two out of three wrenches for the installation. Of course, there's a little bit of wiring that you have to do whenever you're working with electronics like this, but overall, very, very simple to get this installed and we're gonna show you how to do it in just a second. So again, if you have the factory navigation, you have a factory backup camera and you just wanna change out the camera, camera or you have the Alpine system and you want to go with a camera system like this, this is incredibly high quality stuff. This is designed to mount directly in the center of your spare tire on that spare tire carrier, whether it's a tub mounted tire carrier or a bumper mounted tire carrier. As you can see here, you have a couple of different um, size pieces here that allow, depending on the backspacing of the wheel, uh, the width of the tire, all that stuff, you're going to be able to make this fit and make this work. This right here is really the star of the show. This is, again, a very well engineered, very well put together piece. What you have on the bottom here is your camera. In the center, you have a third brake light. So this is going to eliminate the need for an additional third brake light. If you already have one, this is going to add a third brake light for additional visibility built right in there. And then this up here is actually a white LED light. So that's going to work as an additional reverse light, throwing a little bit more light for this camera to pick up. So even in a low light situation, you're going to have a really crisp and clean picture on that screen. Of course, you're going to have all the wiring that you need to get everything set up and everything working properly. So I said it a couple times now, the engineering that goes into something like this, the fact that this is so well thought out, it's so well put together, everything is very, very high quality. All of that does come at a price. This is going to be about $400 for this system here. Do I think it's worth it? I do for the quality and all the features that you're getting here, but if you are on a budget, you can get yourself set up with a camera system for less. So if this is something where you're willing to just splurge a little bit, you have the budget, you are going to get a nicer piece with this system from Alpine than you would with some of the less expensive systems. But again, you have to have the budget for it to be able to purchase something like this. But if you do, you're not gonna be disappointed in the quality. This thing, when you pick it up, you can just feel how well it's put together and you can just see how well it's designed and how well it's thought out with all the features that are included. So like we said before, two out of three wrenches, let's show you how to get it installed. Tools required for this install, a 3 8 a quarter inch drive with various extensions, a T25 Torx bit, 7 mil, 10, 19, and a 21, depending on your lug size. We use side cutters for our zip ties, a small Allen key for our hardware, a push pin removal tool, trim panel removal tools, and optionals and impact. So to start off our Alpine reverse camera installation, we are going to make a clear way to run our wire. Starting with our glove box, we're gonna remove that and the two trim pieces right here for our B panel and our A. So as I was explaining with the glove box, we're just gonna open it up, take the two ends here, and move them inward until these prongs go past the uh, edge there, and it'll just slip right out. So what we're gonna do now is take a push pin removal tool and just remove our five push pins holding our interior trim piece panels down. So there are two on this side of the B pillar, and then two more on the back side here. All right, now I'm gonna move my seat forward and get this lower portion of the B pillar out of here. We're just trying to create enough room that we can access that wiring loom and run our wire beside it. So as you can see, following the door sill back, you can just peel it back and you can follow that wiring harness all the way to the back where we're gonna run our new backup wire. All right, now moving on to the rear, you can see we have an aftermarket wheel and tire set up here. So I'm gonna use a 21 millimeter socket and get my lug nuts out of here and get my spare tire off of here. So now we're gonna go ahead and open up our tailgate as well as our glass here. And then you'll see two trim pieces right here. We will be removing these to access the wiring harness through here. 
So as you can see, I have a uh, trim panel removal tool here. I'm just sliding back and releasing these clips. So as you can see, ours has been spliced into already. We're not gonna have to splice it in, into any wires here. We're just gonna be running our cable with these through here and then into this interior trim through our carpet and up to the front. All right, now using a T25 Torx bit, we're gonna be removing these two bolts that actually hold our little tie downs and secure this panel in place. We can separate our roll bar and seat belt here. So take our trim panel removal tool, get underneath our seat belt here, pry up, and then we can separate these two pieces. To make this a little easier, you're gonna lift up on your little trunk tray here, gain a little clearance here. Kick this out. And you're gonna have a 10 millimeter hidden right behind here. So I just have a uh, extension with my 10 mil. I'm gonna get this. And we should just be able to lift this up and off. So with that panel removed, that's going to expose the route that we need to run our wire. To start off our wiring process, we're gonna start at the head unit. Now to remove your head unit, we need to start off with the window switch here. So I'm just going to pop this out of the way. Remove my wiring harness in the back. There's going to be a red locking tab. Move that to the side, depress, and pull. After that, you'll see a seven millimeter bolt right behind those window controls. Let's remove that. And then on the top here, you're gonna have a cover. Remove that cover. All right, so there's that, another seven millimeter bolt in this little cubby. Get that out of here. Underneath your steering wheel, there's going to be a little panel. Just pull that straight back and remove that. So just past your ignition cylinder, there's going to be another seven millimeter. Remove that. Now we're going to remove the screw on the left-hand side of the steering column. And this is the one on the top. All right, so what we're gonna do now is lower our steering wheel to the bottom most position and then pull straight back on the top portion of our dash. Just like that. So as you can see, we're using an Alpine head unit to install our Alpine backup camera with, as our Jeep did not come factory with that touchscreen. If yours did come with that touchscreen, it will work. So we're just gonna remove the four screws holding in our head unit here. And then we're gonna pull straight back on this. There's gonna be a lot of wires and even a little black box called a Maestro, which helps us control a lot of our factory stuff like our steering wheel controls and stuff like that. All right, what we're gonna do now is run our video wire and I'm going through my, underneath my glove box right now. I'm gonna find a route into my center stack here. I'm gonna go right behind these um, vents here. Grab that one while I can. And then that video should follow. Just like that. All right, while we're in here, let's go ahead and make our video connection. And then our backup camera, which is right here. And this Alpine wiring harness is really nicely laid out and labeled. So let's make sure that that's not going to interfere with anything. And it should be good. So let's reinstall our radio then we'll just leave our head unit in place while we actually test out our backup camera so i'm going to plug this in now then i'm going to key on the ignition and have someone hit the brake for me so the brake light function is working put it in reverse there's our light and there's the picture right there so there's me hi it's working just fine all right cool Let's put this back in park and see if the camera will shut off. And there it goes, perfect. So now we're ready to install. So with our rear view camera wired up to our head unit, now it's time to route the wire all the way to the back. Now, as you can see, we already did expose that factory wiring loom. I'm going to leave enough slack up front here that I can still tuck it up behind my dashboard and run this factory wiring loom. 
So let's go ahead and take our electrical connector and get it through this B pillar over here. Okay, right behind our seat belt. And then it should be popping out on this other side. All right, there it is. And then again, we're gonna be following it all the way up and back. So let's get this wire and all the slack back here. We're gonna go back in a minute here and start zip tying. Right up to the striker plate. All right, now we're gonna take some zip ties. We're gonna be zip tying about every six inches to a foot, just depending on what kind of uh, turns you got and where you need this cable to go. Let's go ahead and cinch down this zip tie. So let's get a couple on. Then I like to have my side cutters available so I can just get the end off real nice and easy. And we don't have to go back around and make sure we get every one. So let's go ahead and do that for the rest of the way. And I'll meet you in the back. So now that you have your wire all the way back here to your tailgate, we're gonna start working on mounting our light bracket itself. Then we're gonna start working on mounting the backup camera, third brake light, and light itself. So let's go ahead and disconnect our old third brake light. That's this electrical connector here. Then we're actually going to semi-close the door here, remove our old grommet. Then I'm actually gonna get another zip tie and zip tie this out of the way right here. So I have this really small zip tie. I'm just gonna keep this out of the way. And it'll be nice and hidden behind our spare tire so no one will see it. All right, let's get rid of that bitter end there. And then after that, we can actually start running our camera wire through that hole. So let's go ahead and run our camera wire right through this loom that'll be hidden by that trim piece. And for this, we're gonna be putting zip ties about every six, three to six inches. Let's go ahead and get our camera wire through that hole back there, pick it up top here. And we'll be able to leave our slack right here in the tailgate. Let's get this through that grommet hole. So let me show you how this grommet works. We're just gonna take our wire, open up the grommet, and slip it in, make sure it seats evenly. Then we're gonna take our slack here, run it back between our tire carrier, and have it available just like that. So what we're gonna do now is start assembling the bracket for our reverse camera and new backup light. So we're just going to make sure that our wire goes through the post there. Now we're going to start our Allen head bolts through this little spacer here. It's a little tough to see the threads, but once you get a couple started, you can pivot it off of that. All right, so as you can see, I have my bracket in place here. I have a spacer, and then this, this is what goes over our wheel stud. So let's just Get this in line, make sure our wire is run through there. Get a couple more of these Allen screws started. So let's go ahead and tighten up all these Allen bolts on the back of our plate here. So let's go ahead and place this on our wheel studs. And you'll see I have plenty of slack to get into my camera and to get my next piece on. So let's go ahead and get the uh, last part of our bracket on here. Start our Allen keys in this one. There's one, I'm gonna start the other one on the corner here just to lock my cable in place.
So with our mount in place and our wire routed to the proper location, we're actually gonna put our spare tire on first before our backup camera. Let's get our lug started on this. All right, I'm just gonna hit this with my impact and tighten it up. Pull out that wire a little bit, and then we can install our camera. All right, so what we're gonna do first is, of course, plug our camera in. And we're gonna go ahead and mount it up. I already did take that center cap out, that little plastic rubber cap. And we're going to start our new little lug washer here. So this lug nut is a 19 mil. If you want, you actually could put a lock nut on there just to secure everyone, everything in there and make sure no one steals this. So I'm gonna tighten this up, make sure it is centered. That looks good there. And I'll just place my cap back on. So with our camera installed and ready to go, let's replace all of our trim panel pieces. So this is just going to slide back in to the top here. Make sure our wiring loom is nice and in there. And this piece over here. All right, and then we're gonna get our side compartment over here for our roll bar. You're gonna need this up Make sure that 10 millimeters back on top. Yep. And then the T25 with the cargo hooks back in place. All right, now moving on to the front, let's go ahead and replace our interior panels, our kick panel first, then our glove box and the side B pillar here. This actually goes underneath like that. And we get the glove box, get that in. So for the glove box, we're just going to set these little clips onto the bottom portion here. And then press in and, and reinstall. Let's get our push pins into our B pillar next. And then one for our kick panel right here. All right, as you can see, I got my bolts back into my head unit. I'm going to slide over our dash interior trim piece, making sure not to hit anything. And there we go. Make sure my window switch is where it needs to be. And that all my clips are lined up. And then I can start pushing, making sure all those clips are set. So let's go ahead and get all of these seven millimeter screws back into place. One over here next to our key. There's another one over here on the other side of the steering column. And of course there is one at the top here. Let's go ahead and reinstall our kick panel underneath our steering wheel here. And you'll see it just clips right into place. And then lastly, our window switch. Plug that in first. Wait to hear that click, lock it in place, and then just press into place. That's gonna wrap up my install of the Alpine rear view camera and light system for your Jeep JK. And for all things Wrangler, keep it here at extremeterrain.com.